welcome back to dr iso today we have very interesting topic risk based auditing with the issue of new versions of iso 9001 iso 14001 iso 45001 and the auditing standard iso 19011 there's a big challenge on risk based auditing let's unlock the block a simplest definition for risk based auditing can be audit considering the risk now when you plan a risk based auditing this should influence the audit planning audit conduct and the audit reporting and again why risk based auditing because this is the first and the most significant change incorporated in the new version of 19011 which is version 2018 of course this demand the audit to be highly business focused let's see why risk based audit is important it is important for all iso or ms auditors because now all the management system standards are based on the annex sl and the annex sl demands a risk based approach so it is very critical to have competency in this sector now also the 19011 which is the guideline for auditing management system it demands a risk based auditing approach the present rapid change in the risk environment where we all operate also highly demanding the risk based approach which is a preventive approach now what consideration on risk in a risk based audit let's see this If you look at the clause five of nineteen thousand eleven, which is the managing the audit process, it says the risk program should consider the risk associated with the management system to be audited. What are the risk in this management system to the organization? Then establish the program. Now, when you plan. the resources you need to consider competent persons the person who perform the audit should have the right competence to perform the audit to meet the objective and the competent methods there should be competent method to perform a risk based audit program continuing to the same topic it is critical to determine evaluate and implement actions which is related to risk when you prepare an audit program now the areas need to cover planning the extent to which you do an audit duration of audit locations of the audit what type of resources do you need like what method how much time etc what should be the audit team what should be their competence will they work as a team is it the right team we are selecting how are we planning the communication how we will deliver what are you going to deliver what are the objectives what type of informations you will collect how you will record how you will manage the records so when you plan a program you need to consider the risk related to all these and you need to consider this evaluate and implement actions so that it does not affect the audit program negatively of course i missed out including the monitoring what consideration on risk in again risk based audit we go to the next clause of 
ISO 19011, which is clause 6, which talks about how to conduct an audit. Now, in order to plan a detailed audit, the team should have the right access to the risk identified for the system which they're going to audit, because that is the input for your detailed planning. They should have a detailed review of the documentation to, in relation to the risk and the controls which is applied in the organization. They should do this homework prior to go for the prior to go for the audit. Now, the risk-based audit planning, which involves the audit team leader, he should consider risk-based approach throughout the planning stages. He should consider the risk of audit activities. What could be the risk in to achieve the audit objectives? He should consider the risk associated with allocation of the resources. And what risk the auditee can have because of the audit. Now, during the opening and closing meeting, the team should address the risk-based approach shortly to the auditees because it's very important. Now, during the audit, if there is any significant risk, this must be reported immediately. If there is any change to the existing risk, or if there is any new risk identified during the audit, must be communicated to the auditees, and it must be reported to you. Now, when you do the audit reporting, you should address the effectiveness, that means the status of the risk, and the actions taken to address them, because this is what an organization is looking for. And of course, in the closing meeting, the status or the effectiveness of the risk and the actions should uh, taken should be summarized in general to the management, because this is what they are looking at. And this is the, this is the outcome of a risk-based audit. Now, let's look into the next clause, which is the competence and evaluation of auditors, which is clause number seven of 19,011. The key element of success of an audit objective is the auditor competence. As you know, the auditor is the one who's performing the task. He is the one doing the detailed job. So the competence is very, very critical. The auditor, he should have a strong understanding on the risk-based auditing approach. And again, he should have a strong understanding on the risk associated with the organization where he is going to do the audit. Because without that knowledge, he cannot do a successful audit in that specific organization. Oh, he should be calibrated as time goes. He should be calibrated to the current and what could be the future risk. There should be a mechanism for that. Otherwise, the auditor cannot do the task in the right way. And the objective audit of the audit will not be met. And of course, he should have a detailed understanding on the requirements of 19,011, which is the guiding standard. Now, there is an annex to that standard, which is, and from there, if you look into the clause A10. The, during the audit, the team should review the entire system and process to see the effectiveness of the risk, whether it has been identified, determined, and addressed. Now, the process should be along with the audit. There should not be separate element during the audit for the risk part alone, no. It should be one audit where you do the process check and the risk effectiveness check. But again, the key point is, the auditor should have the right competence for the risk-based approach, sector understanding, and good, strong professional judgment. Some tips. A good model of risk management can be, as you can see here, establish decision context. Identify the risk. Analyze the risk. Evaluate the risk. Risk management decision. And of course, the monitoring and of course the control, consultation and communication. Now, we'll just look into from where the risk sources starts. Strategic risk, financial risk, operational risk and hazard risk. Again, they can be classified as internal driven, 
or external driven. When you apply a control or when you treat a risk, try to have a hierarchy. Avoid the risk, remove the risk of source, change probability or change severity, share the risk, retain with control. What you see in this slide is a good risk management process. The auditor or the team shall consider this such a process in their mind when they perform a risk-based audit in a system or in a process. Thank you very much. Have a great day.